this evolved sphere and it is also called as evolved construction. If you remember, already we discussed about the construction of a reciprocal lattice from a real lattice in our last lecture, which we did like this, that if this is a real lattice from which we want to construct a reciprocal lattice, I will take a point somewhere here and from this point I will draw perpendicular to a particular set of plane. For example, this is the parallel set of plane. I will draw perpendicular from it and I will cut a length which is equal to 1 divided by D1. So this point basically represents this set of planes. This set of plane in the reciprocal lattice is represented by this point. And this is the origin of the reciprocal lattice which basically you know is the crystal. Crystal is the origin of the reciprocal lattice. In a similar way, if I take this set of plane with an interplanar spacing as D2, then I will draw from the same point vertically to this set of plane and put a point at a distance of 2 pi divided by D2. This was 2 pi divided by D1. So this point represents this set of plane in the reciprocal lattice or in the diverging pair. Now using this concept, we will explain today the evolved sphere or evolved construction. So what we do, we have constructed the reciprocal lattice in terms of the reciprocal D spacing 1 divided by DHKL. This is the reciprocal lattice. This distance with this point represents a particular HKL plan and this distance is the distance between the different planes, that is the interplanar distance. Another utility of this lattice in terms of crystallography is made apparent by the evolved sphere which we will construct today, which tells us that the angle at which each family of plane will diffract in a particular orientation of the crystal. For example, when we talk about the diffraction from the planes, I do this angle theta and this is the incident X-ray or electron beam and this is the diffracted electron or X-ray beam. So what is this angle that we will discuss here? Consider a circle of radius R with points X and Y lying on the circumference here in this case. Now this is a circle of radius R, R and point X and Y are lying on the surface of this circle. Now, if the angle XAY, what is the angle XAY? This is angle XAY is theta, which is made by a vector by a, by a length diameter 2R, then the angle made by a length R will be equal to 2 theta. And from the geometry, 
this line is perpendicular to this line. So this this uh, uh, triangle that is A, X, and Y becomes a right angle triangle to which we can use sine theta, sine of this angle, perpendicular divided by hypotenuse. Perpendicular is XY and hypotenuse is XY, which is equal to 2R. So I can write sine theta is equal to XY divided by 2R. If this geometry is constructed in the reciprocal space, then it has some important implications. What are those important implications? We will discuss here. The radius can be set equal to 1 divided by lambda or 2 pi divided by lambda. It can be 1 divided by lambda or 2 pi divided by lambda and you know 2 pi divided by lambda. This is in the reciprocal space and I can represent it with the vector k. Reciprocal space with a vector k. Where lambda is the wavelength of x-ray which we have used in this experiment. If y is 0, 0, 0, y is 0, 0, 0, okay, it means this point is, coordinate of this point are 0, 0 and 0. Reciprocal lattice point and x is the general point representing HKL plane. This is general point representing HKL plane. Okay? So what I can write representing HKL then the distance XY XY is 1 divided by V HKL. You see this is representing a point and this is I will take as the origin. So distance between the origin and the first reciprocal lattice point will be equal to 1 divided by dHKL or 2 pi divided by dHKL, whichever you want to use. The distance xy is 1 divided by dHKL, thus from equation number 1, which is equation number 1, this one, we can write, thus from equation number 1, we can write sine theta is equal to xy. xy is your 1 divided by dhkl. d h k and l. Okay? Multi divided by 2 lambda. 2 r. And r I have taken as 2 pi divided by lambda or equal to lambda. So I will write 1 divided by d, uh, d h k l divided by 2 divided by lambda. If we rearrange this thing, I will get, what's this? Sine theta is equal to 1 divided by d h k l divided by 2 divided by lambda. 2 divided by lambda. So what I can write, 1, div one divided by 2 dhkl multiplied by lambda, this 2 will go here and lambda will go up, is equal to sine theta, okay? And 1 divided by dh, uh, we can write this as lambda. From here, this will multiply with here. Lambda will be equal to 2 d h k l multiplied by sine theta. And you see what is this? Lambda is equal to 2 d sine theta, which is the 2 d sine theta, which is the Bragg's law. So by this geometry. I can derive the Bragg's law. Okay, so I will say if this is the situation, your Bragg's law is satisfied.
right? And then what I will take is a reciprocal lattice. These points, all these points here, are representing the points of the reciprocal lattice or we can say all these points are representing the points in the diffraction pattern. Now, this K is the direction of propagation of the incident wave. It will have a definite value which may be 2 pi divided by lambda. Okay? K is equal to 2 pi divided by lambda. This is the distance in the reciprocal space and it is terminating at a reciprocal lattice point. Okay? Incident radiation with a particular wavelength corresponding to K and terminating at a lattice point here. Right? Now, the X-ray diffraction experiment is carried out so that the wavelength and the direction for the incident X-ray beam are known. This information can be put into the reciprocal lattice as follows. As I showed it to you, this is the reciprocal lattice in which I have placed this as the direction of propagation of the incident X-ray with a particular value of lambda or k. And I told you earlier that k is equal to 2 pi divided by lambda, reciprocal space, 2 pi divided by lambda. It is terminating at a point O, which is, I will take later on, as the origin of the reciprocal lattice, origin of the reciprocal lattice. Now, what I will do is, I will choose a point according to the orientation of the specimen with respect to the incident beam. I have chosen this point with a incident direction, okay, and then I will draw a vector AO, AO in the incident direction of propagation of X rays and its length is 2 pi divided by lambda and it terminate at the origin. This I will take O as the origin. The third thing is I will construct a circle of radius 2 pi to k. Circle of radius k. I will put the compass pointer here and I will draw a circle whose radius is equal to k. And I know that k is equal to 2 pi divided by lambda. k is equal to 2 pi divided by lambda. This k is a vector and the direction of propagation is the direction of this vector. Note whether this circle passes through any point. I have drawn this circle. Taking this as the center, I have drawn this circle and I note that this circle is passing through certain points. For example, it is passing through this point, it is passing through this point, similarly it is passing through this point, it is passing through this point. Rest of the points are not occurring on the surface of the circle. Now, if this happens, it means this point is at the surface of this circle. Then what I will do, I will draw a line AB to the point of intersection. AB is the vector which is joining the center of the circle with the point which is at the surface of the circle and draw vector OB. This is O, this is B. I told you this is a reciprocal lattice and this is the origin 
and this is the point of the reciprocal lattice. So this OB which I have drawn is basically the reciprocal lattice vector which I represented with G. Dry vector AB to the point of intersection, dry vector OB to the point of intersection, draw a line AE. Now this line I have drawn perpendicular on this, this base, perpendicular to this OB. Now complete the construction to all intersection points in the same fashion. If I take this point, I will do the same thing, join this one here, join this one here. If I take this point, join this one here, join this one here and so on. So I will keep on doing this thing for completion of this graph. Now we have the following facts. From this we can see that these are the facts which we determine from this uh, drawing. What, is, what are these facts? Number one, since OB, this OB, as I told you, O is the origin, B is the reciprocal lattice point. Ends at a point in the reciprocal lattice, it is normal to some set of planes. If you remember, I told you earlier that if I take a point outside, I take a point here, then I have drawn a vector which is perpendicular to certain set of plane. So again I will say this OB will be perpendicular to certain set of planes and is of the length 2 pi divided by t. Length of the reciprocal point is, reciprocal vector is 2 pi divided by t. The interplanar spacing for the sets. D is the interference spacing for the sets. Then, by definition, OB, OB will be equal to 2 pi divided by D. Because OB is what? Is a reciprocal lattice vector. And reciprocal lattice vector is 2 pi divided by D1 or 2 pi divided by D2 etc etc now since ao is equal to 2 pi divided by lambda ao is a wave vector incident wave vector which we call as 2 pi divided by lambda then oe will be equal to 2 pi divided by lambda sine of angle theta this is the theta this is opposite to theta, this will be the sine theta. Uh, this is the high part in use and this is perpendicular and this is the base. So I will write that OB is equal to 2 pi divided by lambda sine theta, OE is equal to this one. And this OB will be double of this because this is a triangle in which these two sides are equal. If there is a triangle in which two sides are equal, and if I draw a vertical here, this vertical will cross it into two equal parts. So if this one is your 2 pi divided by lambda, this one, 2 pi divided by lambda sine theta, then this will be our double of that, 2 into 2 pi, this total length will be equal to, from here to here, it will be equal to 2 multiplied by 2 pi divided by lambda sine theta. Now, you can see, since OB is normal to the lattice plane, OB is a reciprocal lattice vector, it will be normal to certain set of plane. AE is the lattice plane. It is normal to AE. So I will say the lattice plane will be AE or a plane parallel to AE, AE and theta is the angle between the incident wave AO, AO and the diaphragm. Theta is the angle between the incident wave vector AO and the lattice plane. This is the lattice plane. This is the angle theta. 
So exactly the same thing what we have done there. This one, uh, like this one, that the the incident wave vector is making an angle theta with the plane. So what is the plane? This is the plane in this case. An incident is making this angle. So this angle I will call is theta. It is equal to the angle between the lattice planes AE and reflected wave AB. This is reflected wave AB, this one, and this angle will be the same as this one. As I told you, this angle is the same as this angle. Theta. Okay? So this we call as. A uh, coherent scattering, I, I will call it, is the, the, the conservation of the wavelength. The same wavelength here, the same wavelength here. It is equal to the angle between the lattice plane AE and the different wavelength. Since 2 pi divided by D is equal to 2 into 2 pi divided by 2 into 2 pi divided by lambda sin theta. So we obtain lambda is equal to 2v sin theta. So from this you can see 2 pi divided by d, d value 2 pi divided by lambda sin theta. So it is 1 divided by d, so I will write it as uh, this is 2 divided by 2 pi divided by lambda and it will be obtained as we did earlier that it will result as lambda is equal to 2 V sin theta. Now this will be true for any point which is occurring at the surface of this reciprocal layer. For example, if I take this point, this point, what I will do, I will do like this. I will join this one here. Now, this is the reciprocal lattice vector. I will draw perpendicular from here on this. It will divide it into two parts. The same relation will be obeyed here. So I can prove the Bragg's law from the this evolved sphere or evolved construction. Now. Thus, knowing the direction and wavelength of the incident wave. I know the direction of propagation. I know the direction of propagation. And I know the wavelength. Because I, I, I have taken k is equal to 2 divided by lambda. So k can be found only when I know the value of lambda. We have been able to determine which plane will be affected. So, the plane against which we are getting a point on the surface of the circle, that plane will be diffracted. If the circle had passed through no points, for example, if we have run this thing, but circle is not passing through any point, so I will say either that wavelength is not right or the orientation of the crystal is not right for the diffraction to occur. In the question, would not be diffracted by that crystal and that orientation. Further, if the magnitude of the wave vector AO is less than 1 divided by 2 this is 2 lambda divided by a. It's not p, 2 lambda divided by a. The circle could not pass through any point, showing that x-ray diffraction cannot occur if the wavelength exceeds 2a. a is the lattice parameter. If the incident wavelength is greater than 2 times the lattice parameter, the diffraction will not be possible. We note also that longer the vector AO, 
लॉन्ग एंड द वेक्टर ए ओ बिकॉज ए ओ इज वॉट ए ओ इज इक्वल टू टू पाई डिवाइडेड बाई लैमडा इज इक्वल टू के नाउ लॉन्ग एंड इज दिस वेक्टर स्मॉलर विल बी द वैल्यू ऑफ लैमडा and if lambda is very small then circle will pass through many reciprocal lattice points so it would mean that if we use shorter wavelength then the probability of diffraction to occur will be more here i have taken this thing as a circle there might be more than one point of intersection of the circle with the reciprocal lattice indicating that there is more than one plane which can reflect the incident beam according to the plane star you can see from this there are more than one points this point is a connected surface 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 this point is also a connected surface so all the planes which are representing these points in the real lattice will be the diffracting plane in this orientation so we see that more than one diffraction points can occur there might be more than one point of intersection of the circle with the reciprocal lattice indicating that there is more than one plane which can reflect the incident beam according to the plane star now it is important to realize that construction has been drawn in two dimensions i have drawn the circle if i in place of circle i use three dimension which will be the sphere and we will call it as evolved sphere the more and more points will be intersecting with the surface of the sphere in three dimension so i can say there can be many planes which in that in a particular orientation are the diffracting planes okay we can write the bragg's law in vector form by means of the wall construction we can write the bragg's law in vector form for example if i take let g is equal to ob what is this ob this ob is a reciprocal lattice vector i represent it with g and k is equal to ao k is equal to 2 pi divided by lambda is a wave vector k is equal to 2 pi divided by lambda and this is the wave vector of incident wave for diffraction it is necessary that the vector k plus g k plus g should be equal to k dash this is k and this is g it should be equal to k dash so what i can write k plus g that is the vector ab be equal in magnitude to the vector k or we can write k plus g whole square is equal to from this k plus g whole square is equal to k square and if i expand it this one k plus g whole square it will come out to be k square plus g square plus 2 k dot g is equal to k square this will be cancelled with this and you get 2k dot g is equal to k square 2k dot g plus g square is equal to 0 and here 2k dot g plus g square is equal to 0 now if we call the scattered wave vector as k star this is the scattered wave vector which i represent with k star so what i can write k star in the vector form i can write k star is equal to vector k plus vector g i can write this thing like this 
Okay, so K star is equal to K plus G. Now, we can write it like this. K square, since this is the radius and this is the radius, the magnitudes are equal. So, I can write K star square is equal to K square. Agar isko aap yahaan par substitute karne, so what you will get is this thing. You will get K star minus K is equal to G. Of course, what we have written, K star is equal to K plus G vector. So I can take it on this side, it will be K star minus K is equal to G. K star minus K is equal to G. Showing that the scattering changes only the direction of K. Magnitude is not changed, only the direction of K is changed. And that the scattered wave differed from the incident wave by a reciprocal lattice vector G. Their difference is equal to the reciprocal lattice vector G. Equation 2 and 3 are the momentum and energy conservation law for X-ray diffraction. Uh, this is a, I will say this is an elastic diffraction of X-rays. So I can call it as there is no change in momentum and there will be no change in energy. Because the wave uh, magnitude is not changing, only the direction is changing. So we can say the law of conservation of energy and law of conservation of momentum is satisfied. Using one, we can construct the reciprocal lattice, the locus of all those waves that can produce branch reflection. This locus represents a set of planes in three dimensions. The volume terminated by this plane is called as brilliant zone. So you can see exactly similar to what we have done in minus set cell. We have we will do it in the brilliant zone. In mathematics and solid state physics, the first brilliant zone is uniquely defined primitive cell in the reciprocal. What was the primitive cell length of the direct lattice? We defined it by minus set cell. But here in the reciprocal lattice, we draw the same cell, then it will be called as brilliant zone. <coughs> the boundary of this cell are given by planes related to the points of the reciprocal lattice. It is found by the same method as that of the minus set cell. The first brilliant zone is the locus of points in reciprocal space that are closer to the origin of the reciprocal lattice than they are to any other reciprocal lattice point. Another definition is as the set of points in k-space that can be reached from the origin without crossing any branch plane. So you can see it here that this is the real lattice from this we have constructed the reciprocal lattice and in this reciprocal lattice I have constructed the brilliant zone. What I did, I draw a perpendicular, perpendicular bisector of this, I draw a perpendicular, perpendicular bisector of this, I draw a perpendicular, perpendicular bisector of this, I draw a perpendicular here and this is the perpendicular bisector of this. Similarly, I draw a perpendicular here. This is the perpendicular bisector. Perpendicular bisector. Perpendicular bisector. Perpendicular bisector. So the area in the reciprocal space which is covered by these perpendicular bisectors of the first vector is called this area. This pinkish area we will call it, and it is the brilliant zone. The same thing was in the reciprocal, in the real lattice, which we call as minus set cell. So you can see if I want to reach to the boundary of this brilliant zone, I can draw vectors. This one, this one, this one, 
this one it can be reached by all these vectors these vectors are not crossing these lines boundary of the first breeding zone so set up all these vectors is forming the brilliant zone first brilliant zone is set up all those vectors which are originating from the origin and terminating at the boundary of this uh, first brilliant zone similarly if i have this type of lattice i can draw the reciprocal lattice from this which will be like this and in this reciprocal lattice again i will draw the brilliant zone which will be like this you can see this is the reciprocal lattice vector this is the perpendicular bisector this is the reciprocal lattice vector this is the perpendicular bisector similarly this is the reciprocal lattice vector this is the perpendicular bisector this is the reciprocal lattice this is the perpendicular bisector and it gets in the same way this is the perpendicular bisector and this is also the perpendicular bisector so so the area in the reciprocal space which is covered by these perpendicular lines is this pinkish area which we call as brilliant zone first brilliant zone now if i draw the vector starting from the origin terminating on this all these vector will form the first brilliant zone all these vectors will be on the first region. So, so we can describe the Bragg's law in the vector form. So we can derive the Bragg's law information in the reciprocal. We can put the Bragg's law information in the reciprocal lattice, and we found that in a particular orientation, which direction planes are which diffraction planes are diffracting. So as I told you earlier, all those planes whose reciprocal lattice point occur at the surface of the circle are in three dimension at the surface of the sphere, they will form, they will be the diffraction plane. This point is reflecting a reciprocal lattice vector this, this line is representing a reciprocal lattice vector. This point is representing a point in the reciprocal lattice. So this point corresponds to a particular plane. So that plane is occurring. This point is occurring on the surface of the sphere. So this will be done. If I take this point, this is not occurring on the surface. So I will say, the, the, the plane corresponding to this point will not be the diffracting plane in this particular orientation. Similarly, if I take this point, this point is not occurring on the surface. So the plane corresponding to this point will not be the diffracting plane in, the, in this particular orientation. However, if you change the orientation of the crystal by turning it around, then this point can be brought here or this line can be brought to this point so in that orientation then other diffraction plane will come so this is about the break sphere or the break diffraction yes.